Right, it's uh, 16th of January 2023 and I've just come for the first wood walk in quite a while. The whole of January until today has been raining and fierce winds. And, and, and not, it was quite mild actually for the first part of January. This is the first like cold sharp day. But look, there's a picture of the sea monster now. Uh, the, the men working the great big bulldozers will be bringing that down. In fact, they woke me up this morning at 8 o'clock with this massive crash as some of the pillars, not the yellow ones, but some of the other pillars crashed to the ground. It made the window shake. That's how fierce the... So this is the end of our sea monster, everyone. And the... Um, it's not a brilliant camera this one for zooming in at all. Plays up a lot this one. In fact it won't zoom out. Oh it's doing it now. But there we go. So that's a disappearing temporary landmark. It'll be gone very soon. Next couple of days it'll be gone. Now, they'll probably break the rest of it down. They might retrieve those big pillars though because I would have thought they could be useful for something. Um, for some reason. Anyway, I've, I walked up through Grove Park, met a lovely Jack Russell, a young one called Ruby. Beautiful dog, who was very friendly towards me and just gorgeous. A lovely dog like Bram. Anyway, I thought I must get out, whatever. So, and because um, I've been taking Maggie for short walks while Zara's on her course, so uh, i got to get back after going to Tesco's to take her for her possibly beach walk today. <sighs> I do, we don't go far because she's 15 now. <sighs> so here we go, familiar territory everyone. Sheila up in the walk, up in the wood. I'm going to walk up to the fort today following a small track and uh, to see how the clearing is progressing or destructing whatever you want ever think of it <sighs> vents in the world the Ukraine are continuing to be bombed heavily by artillery from the Russians a lot of people died in a high-rise flat over the weekend, many died in uh, one of their cities. Um, though aid is being sent in, we think we've sent 10 tanks. I think we've sent 10 ch Challenger tanks. The, the thing is, the Russians don't seem to want to back down from being destructive. They're deliberately targeting people. It's really awful actually. They're deliberately killing the Ukrainian people. Um, those that have hung on all this time, right? It started a year ago nearly, February last year, 2022, when Russia first crossed the, to, to attack them. And those people that died over the weekend had survived for 11 months and were hopeful and they were hopeful and they've been wiped out in that tall, those tall flats. Ukraine was once sparkling and clean and progressive, evolving really nicely. People, children, education, work and it's been smashed up and we watch the excuse being that if we dare to do anything too invasive he will use nuclear weapons on us he's threatened us he's threatened to turn the UK into a nuclear desert and I believe you'd do it it's, it's funny really, I mean America, apparently President Biden has been walking around with, with 10 numbers for to press for nuclear war 
on his mobile phone. They've gone crazy in America over it. Anyway, it all it is very scary, really. But he's killing his own people, Putin. If they don't do what he says, if they don't, if they back down, they disappear. They've suddenly died or had a car crash or something. I mean, we never hear what's happened to the Chelsea owner at that time, Abramovich. We never hear about him. We know all his stuff was confiscated, yachts and stuff, and he had to leave the country, as far as we know. He was one of the oligarchs of Russia, and they're disappearing, as are the ones of Ukraine, because everything's up in upheaval. Anyway, folks, that's what's going on there. Iran have been naughty. They're killing lots of innocent protesters and torturing them before they kill them. They've been really, really evil. And they just killed one of their own, um, a high up bloke in the parliament, which often in their sort of parliament, they said he was spying for Britain. They tortured him really badly and he admitted to somebody who managed to video him that he told them anything just because the torture was so horrendous. Um, he just told them what they wanted to hear and he died. They, they executed him a couple of days ago. What a state our world's in, isn't it? China now have lifted all sanctions on Covid, by the way. They've now said that people are free to move about wherever they want. Their idea now is herd immunity. So we don't really know. The viruses, they change like the wind. Uh, then they're saying most of the vaccinations we've had won't protect us against future ones. I ain't having any more. When I had that last one, it knackered me out for a year when I had that jab almost immediately it was like I was diabetic it turned me sleepy comatose even and I'd never been like that before so I said no I'm not having it anymore now I had the first really 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 bad cold for 15 20 years over Christmas but I think it was time I did have one. I've recovered well. I had to have the doctor out though, because at one point I couldn't breathe. The thing is, I'd been to a doctor October, November time with what well, I thought I had. It. I wanted her to listen. She didn't, she wouldn't listen to me and she wouldn't prescribe me anything. And I knew then I had an underlying chest infection. Anyway, it got worse and worse. I was having to use the inhalers all the time with no effect. I mean, do you know what? Since that doctor came out, he was right to the point. He was very good. He gave me just a course of prednisolone and a course of antibiotics. And do you know what? From day one, I didn't have to use inhalers. And I knew, I, I had requested them and asked my GP. I knew what would work. As I'd asked the other doctor, who also wouldn't, was not at all holistic. She, she was awful, actually. Um, and she, she, she wasn't listening. She wasn't at all holistic. Didn't care about anything. My situation, she just wanted to know what my pulse was. You know, that's how she was. I was uh, disgusted with the care. I'd never have her again. I didn't think she was at all appropriate for a modern doctor. She was old and not much. She wasn't young. Old school, I think. They probably dragged her out of somewhere. They're so short of doctors now. Um, and I knew I had something going on for quite a while. When I had that bad asthma attack at, at, uh, once when I was going for over to Draycott and it was, I had it for a while this so I knew there was something brewing it was it was getting easier to see a doctor but they've always been anti 
antibiotics. Now, now they're suddenly for them and they're prescribing them like sweets to school kids just in case they get strep A, which is a common bacteria anyway, and uh, some other complaint. And um, I can't believe it, you know, the, the trouble I had getting an antibiotic treatment for a tooth abscess was amazing. Um, absolutely amazing. I couldn't get one off the dentist, in the end I went to the doctor. I almost begged. I had some terrible abscesses um, over the last couple of years. Anyway, it has all sort of resolved now. I have got a broken tooth, which is dead anyway. Um, there's no sign of... I mean, when it was alive, I had had a massive abscess in it. A really bad one. And from the, the tooth next to it, it could be removed. Now, this one is actually broken in half. I've been to the doctor, the dentist, and he just said, oh, it's all right, it's solid. And <laughs> so, it's not causing me any grief, so I thought I'd leave it in there then, because it might disturb the others if, uh, if uh, we pull that one out. It could weaken my front teeth. So I've, got, I've kept it. It's not, it's not causing me any grief. It looks, if I don't smile too broadly, you can't really see it. <sighs> And all the other teeth seem to be okay. There's still a little bit of type of infection that I've had for over a year in one, which it came after he pulled a tooth out and didn't. I don't really got it all out. I don't really got it all out. Anyway, so that's a little bit about my health at the moment, everyone. Um, on this beautiful day. All goes back to talking about getting out and walking and everything. Um, obviously I do feel terribly upset about the 126 being ending. I now have to make completely different arrangements and I actually fear unreliability of uh, a bus service. I, I have to use as a substitute. Um, yeah, that's very disturbing actually taking that. I cannot believe either that they've removed that bus. I can't believe it. It was a it, it was used. It was a great bus. It took us to Cheddar, it took us to Wells and all the other places that I used to stop off at. No, I can't I certainly can't get to Wells, not without a six hour trip. Um can't really get well, I can get to Cheddar because what I've planned now is I get this other bus called the number 51 and it would drop me off either over at um, Churchill or Winscombe or Banwell. I can do walks from those places. Now if I get dropped off at Winscombe what I have to do right I have to um, walk from Winscombe to Cheddar through Axbridge. That's what I have to do. And that's what's going to be one of my walks because there's a couple of fields I need to do where there's no cows this time of year. Which I can't do in the summer, it's too risky. So I've got this little circular walk I want to do. Because what it is, this bus doesn't run very often in the afternoons. So you basically you've got to organise a five hour walk. To accommodate this bus because there's no bus from half past one onwards um, until four, four o'clock-ish and then there's not another one then till six-ish. It's not frequent and before now it's not even run so it is all a bit dodgy. Right I'm going to turn off for a minute folks take some photos and we're going up along the the Hillfort Wall. It's a nice day for it, it's not too mucky and we can see what's happening with the wood on the fringe this side. Over and out.